Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel where we're all about financial freedom and making you as much money as possible. Now, I've been asked a ton of questions, which is the best index fund or ETF to buy and hold for the long term? And which one comes with the lowest risks and fees? And especially for beginners, it can be so overwhelming and it's completely understandable because it is just so many to choose from. So where do you start? Well, index funds are highly rated as one of the best approaches to investing you can take, which I highly agree with. So today I'm going to share with you the three best Vanguard index funds that you can buy in the UK. You can buy them, keep adding money to them and essentially hold them forever. It's a set and forget approach which is the perfect long term investment. I'm going to be focusing on Vanguard because they're one of the biggest companies across the globe that are managing money. They currently have over 7.2 trillion under management with over 30 million investors. And they've been going since 1975 which makes them the perfect reliable choice for index funds. I'm also personally going to be buying some of these. I'm currently reorganizing my 100k portfolio so if you're interested in seeing an update if you haven't already subscribe and stick around for that. But first let's quickly go over what is an index fund and why do you want one? An index fund essentially gives you a broad coverage of a specific market or sector and may have different focuses or goals. So for example, if you were interested in tech, you might buy Spotify, Apple and Facebook. Well instead you could buy a tech ETF which would essentially give you a coverage of the top 50 or 100 tech companies. Now the benefit of buying an average is if one company falls or one company rises it doesn't matter too much so you don't have that stress and worry. You just get a steady average of the top companies over time. Rather than just trying to pick specific winners as most people fail to do as they try to beat the market you get a nice consistent return on your money. Now while I do like buying specific companies for the vast majority of people it's not going to be a good option and it's not something you should base your whole portfolio on. You can have some individual companies but base the vast majority of your portfolio on an index fund. Index funds can be across a range of different sectors, for example you've got healthcare, pharma, oil, IT etc. Or you've got ones that focus on specific countries or they focus on a specific goal like giving you a high dividend. And you've also got some that focus on things like bonds. But there's three that I think are hands down better than all of the others. And these are geographical index funds and these are the ones we're going to be focusing on today. These cover a range of different sectors and give you a more stable return of the market as a whole. By having these you don't have to wonder if a certain sector is doing good or bad. Even someone who's really experienced does struggle to beat the market. So just be aware of that, this is a much safer, reliable approach. And it's something that Warren Buffett, who's classed as the most successful investor of all time, says 95% of people should do. So you can buy these, just pile more money in each and every month, forget about it and let your money grow. Now I'm going to be showing you these on the free trade platform because that's a platform I use to trade because it's the lowest cost with the lowest fees. You can buy these directly from Vanguard, but you're going to pay an extra 0.15%. And of course, I'd imagine these are going to be available on most providers. If you haven't already got an account, I'll leave a link down below to free trade because you get a free share when you sign up. And if you haven't already, come over and do join our Facebook group. It's completely free. So with that being said, let's dive into the first Vanguard index fund. So the first one on my list is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. The ticker symbol you're going to want to use on this one is VUAG. Now you'll notice on this one, it says accumulation. Now what this means is because there's a collection of companies within there, when some of them pay a dividend, it's going to reinvest that money automatically. The other one you will see is distribution. You don't want that one unless you need dividends, but that's a completely different story. What's important to recognize here is if there's two, so if there's an accumulation and a distribution, it doesn't mean because one gets dividends, you're going to get more money. It's just how the money is distributed to you. So it's either going to get reinvested or it's going to get given out to you as a dividend. So they're both going to make the same amount of profit but this one's gonna give you higher returns. So don't get too caught up in the dividends. So what this one does is essentially give you a broad coverage of the S&P 500, which is essentially the top 500 companies in America. And what it aims to do is track the performance very closely. So it will essentially move exactly the same as the S&P 500. And if we take a look at the historical performance of the S&P 500, you can see from its inception just how much it's steadily gone up over time. Yes, there's been periods where it's dropped, but you shouldn't worry about those too much. And let me just show you what I mean by that. So looking at this graph, for example, if you bought here just before it crashed, you'd be very unlucky, but then you kept it and kept it and kept it a year later. You can look at the difference. Actually, it looks like a huge drop, but you still would have made 16% return in a year, which is fantastic returns on your money. So don't worry too much about this, thinking is it gonna drop? If you're gonna hold long-term, it really just shouldn't matter. And don't worry about trying to time the market. 
So when we take a look at these, we can see the key stats. So the ongoing charge is actually 0.07%, which is a really low management fee for a fund. You might also have heard to this referred to as an expense ratio. So what you're looking for is a low charge or a low expense ratio. And why they take this, this is essentially their cut for managing your money. And it pays the fund managers, etc. If we take a look at the performance for this one, you can see the growth of £1,000 would actually be now at £1,400 over the space of two years. And you can see the returns over the past year have been 28%. But overall, the average of the market is about 7% over a long-term period. If we take a look at the portfolio, you can see the valuation, so the price to earnings. Now this is at 21, which is fairly low and it's a fairly safe bet. And this means the price compared to the earnings is relatively reasonable. So the lower this number is, the better. And if we take a look at some of the biggest companies within there, you've got your Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google. So there's huge companies within this fund. And so the really big companies that you'd hope would be really reliable. Of course, if you could see the rest of this list, there'd be a lot of really boring companies, but the top companies are always going to be these big tech giants. You can also see, taking a look at the asset allocation, it's 100% within stocks, and it's also 98.99% all within the United States as that's the market that it's tracking. So why this one is really good is it tracks the performance of America and it's had really nice returns over time and it's pretty much just gone up and up and up with all time highs been hit every single year. There's a big argument that this one could come down, but as I just demonstrated, if it does come down, if you can wait it out, then eventually it should come back up. So this is a really nice one and it keeps you up to date with that big growth of the tech industry because a majority of these huge tech companies are all based within America. Now the next one on my list is the Vanguard FTSE 100 ETF. And also when you take a look at this one, it's accumulation, which is important to note. The ticker symbol you're going to need for this one is VUKG. So this one, you might have guessed, if you know the S&P 500 is America, the FTSE is the UK. So what this is going to do is track the 100 top companies in the UK. Now, if you do check the performance of the FTSE 100 compared to the S&P 500, it's not quite as radical, but it has been steadily going up over time. And at the moment, with things like Brexit causing a lot of uncertainty, coupled with coronavirus, it's kind of knocked us back. But I think this could be a much stronger position to be in at the moment with the US being so high. So taking a look at the fees again for this one, the fees are 0.09%. So the fees on all of these are really low, so you don't need to worry about overpaying for fees. If we take a look at the top 10 companies within there, you've got a nice mix of different companies. So you've got AstraZeneca, you've got Unilever, you've got HSBC, which is a bank. You've got GSK, again, another healthcare company. You've got Rio Tinto, which is a miner. British American Tobacco, huge company again with great dividends. You've got BP and you've got Shell. So there's a nice mix of different companies. If we take a look at the top 10 sectors, we've got industrial metals and mining at 10%. We've got pharma, personal care, non-renewable energy and banks. So compared to America, it's quite boring, but boring can be good. And if we take a look at the top 10 countries, you can see it's 92% in the UK, followed by Ireland, etc. So this one's focused on the top 100 companies in the UK, which personally, I think at the moment is a really great option. As the UK has been hit hard by Brexit and coronavirus, I think it's only going to start going from strength to strength. And again, as a long term option, this is a really safe bet. Now, the next one on my list is actually probably in the top spot for a set and forget approach. And it's the one a lot of people who are interested in financial independence, who want to just put their money away and forget about it, are really interested in. And that is the Vanguard All World ETF. Again, it's accumulation. The ticker symbol you're going to want for this one is VWRP. Now, what this one does is essentially, rather than be America or be UK, it tries to give you coverage of the whole global economy. And so the nice thing with this one, you don't need to worry, is America going to do well? Is the UK going to do well? You're getting a coverage of everywhere. So whoever does well, you're getting a coverage of that. And if we take a look at the key stats for this one, the fees are slightly higher at 0.22%, which is again, really low. You can see the growth of a thousand pound in the same time period has gone from 1,000 up to 1,258. Now that admittedly is not as high as the S&P 500 one, but it's a much safer option. You can see the returns over the past year have been 24%. If you take a look at the asset allocation again, you're 99.97% in stocks. And this is where it gets quite interesting when you take a look at the geographical breakdown. So you get 56% in the US, which again is a large percent of the market. You're followed by the Eurozone, you've got some Asia, Japan, Asia again, 
you've got more Europe, UK, Canada and Australasia. So you are getting coverage of different countries. The price per earnings ratio is lower again, 18. And the top 10 holdings, surprise, surprise, are still made up of huge US companies. So you've got your Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, but you've also got a few in there like this one, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Co, which are a huge company. So this one, again, gives you a wide coverage of different markets. All three of these would be fantastic options to add to your portfolio. I'm probably going to lean towards a UK ETF at the moment because I think it's got great potential. The US has had the best returns in the past, but just to reiterate, past performance doesn't dictate future profit. So although it's done fantastic in the past, doesn't mean it's not going to come tumbling down. And that's the important thing when you look at charts. Don't just look at how it's done in the past and think, wow, that's fantastic. You need to think, where is it going to go in the future? If you don't really know, then the global one is probably your best option. But again, with any of these, you really can't go far wrong. You're going to get your average of 5 to 7% a year. You can have some good years, some bad years, and you're going to hopefully land on 5 to 7% a year and be really happy and just focus on making more money and adding more money to the pot. And over time, that compound interest is going to give you that fantastic end figure. Now, let's just talk about risk, because I know that's going to be asked and it's going to be on people's mind. Now, it's important to know with all kinds of investments, there does come risk. But I honestly think these are the safest option anybody can go for. You need to be able to leave your money for a good amount of time, at least three to five years. So just be aware of that. If you're looking for a short-term investment, these might not be for you. It's if so the market dips, it'll recover, which it pretty much always has. The problem is, if you don't take risk, inflation is on the rise. So inflation is currently 2.5%. So if you leave your money in the bank, you're actually just losing money, which is really scary, but it's something we have to deal with. If you're not putting your money in bricks and mortar or an investment, you're essentially going to be losing money. Your money is going to be worth less each and every year. So just bear that in mind. As I mentioned, I'll be definitely adding some of these to my portfolio, so I'll let you guys know how that goes. If you do buy one of these or you bought something similar, do let me know in the comments down below because I love interacting and talking to you guys. So I hope this was useful. If it was, please smash that like button because it really really helps the channel grow and I'll see you guys in the next video.